Hello everybody, my name is Blaze, and we are now in part 3 of our Beginners Action RPG tutorial series. Now the last time we were here in Game Maker Studio, we are back in Game Maker Studio by the way, if you haven't noticed, we created our first sprite, or a test sprite, and we made sure that we can move and we can collide with other objects. Now in this video, we're going to take those sprites that we created from part two, put them into the game, and actually we're going to get started with giving our player object some movement direction, or when we move up, we'll face up. When we move down, we face downwards. Left and right do the same thing. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new sprite. Again, I'm using my own naming convention, so if you have your own version, uh, use yours. I'm going to call mine view, whoops, no spaces, sprites, player down. Actually, I'm just going to call mine view player down. I think that's an easier way. And then we'll click image, and then in image, we go down to import strip image. And what this does, is it opens up a new window here. If you've worked with 1.4, this will look very familiar. And we can essentially select where we want to find our sprite. Now, we want to create four sprites for now. And they're each going to have their own uh, sprite piece here. Don't forget to set your origin point. Mine's going to be in middle center. And I'm going to duplicate mine. And then we're going to use sprite player up, edit image, image, import strip. Now while I'm doing this, this is all pretty automated. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure it out as well. What I need to tell you guys ahead of time is that this video is divided up into two parts. I'm pretty sure you've heard the saying, there's more, there's more than one way to skin a cat. This applies to this video. And what I'm going to show you guys are two common methods for creating um, directional movement or directional sprites. What they are is one will use two different sprites for left and right, whereas the other method will use the same sprite for left and right, but it will just flip it. So at some point later in the video, I'm going to ask you guys to make a decision as to which method you're going to use. If you're unsure, then that's okay. Don't worry, don't freak out. Watch both and then decide for yourself which one you're going to use. This should actually be right, not left one. Yes, I realized that. Okay, let me just rename these. Mm -hmm. I was so used to uh, going the right sprite first, but then, I don't know. I just, I just lost it. There we go template. This is actually the uh, third take of this video, so I'm a little bit frustrated. And at the same time, I'm also a little bit sick, but let's just keep going. All right, let's say that we now have our four sprites and I've taken about three and a half minutes to do all that, which is fine. Now we're going to create our first script for the game. If you're not really familiar with creating scripts, don't worry. This will only be a very basic script. In fact, it's only going to hold um, some constant variables, which are called macros. And macros are, like I already said, they're constant variables that you can't change the value of while you're playing the game. So a variable like health or, I don't know, speed or even the X and Y values that we're using here, the X and Y axis values here, they're all variables that can change. But a macro here in Game Maker Studio is a variable that you cannot change at all. So we are going to create five macros today. Or if you are using eight directions, then you will need another four directions. So that's nine. So we're going to create our first macro here will be macro, right? I'm going to call it right. And we need to give it a value. And that's it. That's all we're going to do for now. And if everything works out, your macro should turn red. Um, if you've worked with macros in Game Maker Studio 1, this will be quite familiar. But here in Studio 2, this is not the case. Uh, you would have to create a script 
that uses that stores all your macros here. So macro left. I'm using all capitals in this situation because I want to be able to define um, or I want to be able to tell when I'm using a macro or not. So here we have right up left and down, of course. And I said that we're going to need five. We're going to use this last macro. This fifth macro here is going to be our action idle zero. Why do I have two macros that both have zero values? That will become clear in just a second. So let me just put some notes here. This is going to be our direction. And down here is going to be our action. Cool. Once you have all that, save it and close it. That's all we will need for now. And then in our objects, we're going to go to the player object and choose any one of your directional sprites. It doesn't really matter because it will get overwritten anyway or overridden. Sorry, wrong word. So I'm just going to choose uh, view player down. And here in our players create event, let me just center that on screen. In our players create event, what we are going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and give our player a direction using the capital D at the start, not the built in variable. We need to make sure that we're using our own. So direction equals, we're gonna default to down. So this is where things start to, to make sense, right? I hope it makes sense anyway. And our action is going to be idle. There we go. So we've created our, pretty much this is the same for both. Um, now, if you haven't already decided which method you're going to take, now would be a good time to choose. Because at this point, we're going to go left or right. You need to choose. Don't worry, they will come together uh, at the end of the video because they give similar results. So uh, I will give you a second and I hope to see you in either this video or the next. Okay, so I have a feeling that you have chosen, which is good. Let's keep going. The first thing that we're going to do for now is we're going to create a 2D array. And if we open up the macro script, remember we have zero, one, two, three, and then zero again. The 2D array takes each of these values and puts them into an array. So if you've worked with an array before, basically it's a chunk of memory that stores similar forms of data. Most of the time it's going to be integers or floats. In this case, we're going to actually store a sprite. So what we're going to do is name our, is name our array view and arrays use square brackets, so keep that in mind. And for, we'll start with down. Actually, we'll start with right and idle. See, that is why in our macro script, we have right is zero and idle is zero, so that we know exactly where it is. This is basically an X value. Our direction is our X value, and our actions are going to be Y values. If you remember your grids from school, then, X and Y. Basically, that's the difference between a regular array, a one dimensional array, which only has a Y value, and a two dimensional array, which has both an X and a Y value. So just keep that in mind. I don't want to get too caught up in the details this early on. Just keep that in mind though. So view, we're going to assign a sprite to this. So view, we're going to use view player right. And now I want you guys to either pause the video or fast forward and complete the list, all right? So we're gonna have right, up, left, and down. So I'm gonna give you a second, pause it, try it. Okay, now let's actually finish it. Go view, right, whoop, not right. We need to actually go up, up, and we're still in idle, so we're not really doing anything. View, player, up, done. And then we're going to create another one view square brackets. Remember square brackets left and idle. Hope you guys are keeping up. All right. View player left and then view. The last one is down and idle view player down. Cool. We're pretty much halfway done with part A. This is part A. 
This is what it looks like. So we have four different directions. We have right, up, left, and down. And essentially, what we're going to do now is make sure that it actually draws. Because if we play the game as it is, we're actually not going to get anything. It's just going to look like our regular sprite is just doing his thing. He's colliding. So everything works, more or less. Um, but he's not facing any of the directions. So we need to fix that. And the way to do that in method A is actually to go here into the step event. Now in the step event, what we're going to do, this is going to be slightly complex, but it should be pretty easy. Let's put some space between our input and the code that we wrote in the first video. So what we're going to do is say if x axis is greater than zero, we're going to change our direction to right. And then we're going to say else if x, whoops, I spelled that wrong, x axis is less than zero, then our direction will equal left. Now you can see here that I haven't used the curly braces. That's because it's just happening on one line. If your if statement or any kind of check statement here, whether it's if, while, or else, or in this case, else if, if it's just one line of code that you're running, then you don't have to use the curly braces. It's a good idea to use them at all times, but I'm kind of pressed for time today. So I'm trying to make sure that I cover as much ground in as short a time as possible. So why am I using else if? Well, let's play the game now and I will just show you. Hopefully showing you will give you an explanation. Uh, we, haven't, <laughs> we haven't actually done anything because our x-axis is up here. Oh, our check is up here. So what's going to happen is we need to change our sprite. So down the bottom here, we're going to go sprite index. So right at the end of the code, sprite index equals view. And in our square brackets, we're going to have direction and action. Now keep in mind that our direction and action is defined here. Now, we don't have any other actions apart from idle at the moment. What we are interested in are the directions. So let's go back. I'm not gonna edit this out because all teachers make mistakes. I wanna keep my mistakes in. So let's play the game now and let's see what happens. We should face left and right. There you go. We have something working now. He goes right and he goes left and he faces those directions too. But like I said before, I made that mistake. What if I was, why do I use else if? If I just had it as else, basically we can't have this x axis is less than zero. What happens with else is if we try to play the game now, if we're not pressing any keys, he's always going to face left, right? Left. <laughs> so if we're pressing right, then he'll face right. But if we're not pressing any keys, so I've let go and he's not moving, he's facing left. So basically what happens is with else if, we can put in another check. Else if x axis is less than zero, we're facing left. Now what this does is it means that what happens if we are pressing neither left nor right well, then in that case, it just keeps the data or it just stays in the direction that we were last moving in or that we were last facing. Now, we're also going to do the same thing for y-axis, except this time we need to go if y-axis, whoops, y-axis with an i is, hmm, we'll start with greater than zero. Then we have direction equals down. And again, we're going to use else if y-axis is less than zero. So we're going up. We are going to use direction equals up. And that should be done. That's 
pretty much all that we put in. Don't forget this line at the bottom here, which will actually change our sprite. Let me put a comment in for that too. Change the sprite. So there we go. What we're doing here is we're manipulating the actual direction that we are going to be facing in. And then down here, we're applying that direction to our sprite. So let's have a look here. Let's play the game now. We should be able to face all four directions that we have put into the game. So we can move right, we can move left, we can move up, and we can move down. That's looking pretty good. I think it works. And of course, if you have come here from volume B, or if you're curious about what volume B has in store for you, then by all means, go check it out. But at this point, if you are satisfied with where you are with the project, then we are done for now. We are pretty much finished. So that's all for me. I hope you guys have learned something here today. I know it was very short, but I'm covering two different methods for doing the same thing. Of course, if you're curious about that other method, then go watch the other upload for that. There really isn't that much of a difference. The only thing is we're going to be using just one sprite. And so I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions or comments, then feel free to leave them in the comment section below. That's what it's for. Hopefully you guys subscribe and share this around if you found it helpful. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go over to the next part of the video, which is we're going to do some cleanup. And so hopefully you are prepared for that. But for now, that's all for me, and I will see you guys later. Bye.